The story begins with a gripping and mysterious scenario. Ethan, a Secret Service agent from Seattle, regains consciousness in a forest after a car accident, sporting a bruised face and feeling disoriented. He manages to make his way through the pine forest and finds himself in the seemingly peaceful town of Wayward Pines, Idaho. His appearance in town draws curious looks from passersby, and upon entering a restaurant and collapsing from exhaustion, he learns from a waitress where he is. Ethan wakes up in a hospital bed in Wayward Pines, where a nurse named Pam tends to him, explaining he has minor injuries from the car accident. Distressed, Ethan inquires about his partner, Stallings, who was with him during the accident, only to learn of Stallings' tragic death. When he asks for his cell phone and belongings, he's advised they're at the police station, but he's encouraged to rest instead. Despite being the only patient in the hospital and against Pam's advice, Ethan leaves to go to the police station. There, he finds he can't access his belongings during the day, leading him to a nearby bar. Meanwhile, Ethan's boss, Adam, informs his wife, Teresa, that Ethan has been in an accident, but they haven't found his body yet. At the bar, Ethan borrows a phone from a waitress named Beverly to try and contact his family, but fails. Beverly empathizes with his situation and gives him her address in case he needs further help. He tells her his identity and that he is looking looking for two fellow agents, Evans and Kate, who is also Ethan's lover. Later, he notices her note mentioning the absence of crickets in Wayward Pines. On his way to the motel, he hears cricket sounds, but they are coming from a hidden speaker. The next morning, unable to pay for his hotel, Ethan visits Beverly's address only to find an abandoned cabin with the decaying body of Evans inside. Returning to the police station, he encounters an indifferent Sheriff Arnold, who denies having Ethan's belongings and is unresponsive about the body. Ethan's attempts to make phone calls again prove fruitless. Back at the bar, Ethan finds a new operator and Beverly's mysterious absence. After an argument, Ethan is knocked unconscious. He wakes up in the hospital once more, this time restrained. Dr. Jenkins, a psychiatrist, insists on performing surgery due to a supposed blood clot. Despite Ethan's protests, injected with a sedative, he's left in the operating room. Surprisingly, Beverly rescues him, and together they knock out Pam and they escape the hospital. They reach a secluded wooden house where Beverly shares her own experience. She reveals she arrived in Wayward Pines in 1999, searching for an escape for a year. She also tells him she and Evans tried to escape, but he was killed as Ethan falls under the sedative. He tells her it is actually 2014 now. Ethan wakes to find Beverly gone. Adam and investigators in Seattle are puzzled by the lack of evidence indicating Ethan's presence in the car during the accident. Meanwhile, in Wayward Pines, Ethan spots Kate, the other missing agent, at a nearby party. She appears older than he remembers, and Ethan caught cautiously follows her to a house that she enters with a man named Harold. When Ethan confronts Kate, she denies knowing him and warns him about the town's extensive surveillance with cameras and hidden microphones. Shockingly, she reveals she has been living in Wayward Pines for 12 years, leaving Ethan bewildered and alarmed. Determined to escape, Ethan steals a parked car, but his attempt to leave Wayward Pines is unsuccessful as he finds himself inexplicably back in town. Frustrated, he tries to flee on foot, only to be stopped by a massive electrified wall surrounding the town. Sheriff Arnold confronts him for the car theft and dismisses his claims of being a Secret Service agent. The next day, Ethan returns to the cabin where he found his colleague's body, still undisturbed. He discovers a mysterious notebook in his friend's boot, but is interrupted by Arnold, who arrives with a gun, claiming a forensic team is coming. Ethan is forced to leave and heads back to the hotel. At the bar, he unexpectedly encounters Beverly again. She covertly arranges a secret meeting and gives him money, hinting at a plan involving Evans' notebook. Using the money, Ethan visits a cafe and manages to call the Secret Service, only to realize the operator is an imposter. He becomes suspicious when the cash hastily takes the banknote from him. Later, Ethan tries to connect with Kate at the toy store where she works. Despite his efforts, Kate remains distant and secretive, adhering to the town's strict rules against discussing the past. Ethan's confusion deepens when he visits Evans' home, where Evans' wife denies knowing him and claims she witnessed her husband's suicide. Seeking answers, Ethan confronts Arnold, who instructs him to stay at the hotel and informs him that Evans' body has been sent to the morgue. 
At the morgue, Ethan retrieves the notebook from Evans' clothes. In a startling turn, Ethan sees his wife, Teresa, and son, Ben, being brought into the hospital on stretchers, but he can't find them anywhere. Dr. Jenkins warns Ethan that his condition is deteriorating and insists he needs surgery immediately. Back in Seattle, Teresa grows increasingly anxious about Ethan's whereabouts, with their son, Ben, suspecting Ethan might have run away with Kate. When she contacts Adam for information, he assures her of his efforts, but explains that the details are confidential, deepening the mystery and concern for Ethan's fate. The tension escalates as Ethan continues to unravel the mysteries of the town. He meets Beverly at their agreed location in Pine Forest, where she reveals that a tracking device has been implanted in him. Together, they remove the device in a secluded stone house. Beverly also shares the harrowing truth that Sheriff Arnold publicly executed Evans as a warning to the town. Ethan later meets Kate again, and despite his reservations, accepts an invitation to dinner at her house with Beverly, anticipating surveillance. He cleverly leaves the tracking chip on his hotel bed and sets out to find a package hidden in the pine forest, as indicated by a map inside Evans's belongings. After successfully retrieving the package, Ethan observes Arnold firing a gunshot from a distance at Kate's house. While Beverly nervously remains at the dining table, Ethan searches the bathroom for surveillance devices. Beverly inadvertently mentions her daughter, a violation of the town's strict rules. Realizing her mistake, she excuses herself, leading to a tense situation as all the phones in the town ring simultaneously, signaling their exposure. Ethan and Beverly hastily leave, evading the crowd, now alerted to their actions. In the cemetery, Ethan instructs Beverly to retrieve the agent's package while he draws the crowd away. However, Beverly is captured by the townspeople. Ethan, hiding in a nearby house, witnesses a chilling scene where Beverly is dragged onto a stage before an excited crowd. Arnold incites the crowd to punish Beverly for her attempt to escape, and she is brutally executed in front of the onlookers, including Ethan. Meanwhile, Ethan's wife Teresa and their son Ben travel to Idaho to investigate Ethan's disappearance. They arrive at the Secret Service field headquarters in Boise, Idaho, where Ethan was last reported. While there, Teresa uncovers a lead to Wayward Pines. As Teresa and Ben near the town, they are pulled over by Sheriff Pope, who sabotages their car under the guise of fixing an oil leak. The following morning, Ethan stumbles upon a truck loaded with supplies, indicating a connection to the outside world. He hides in the truck's cargo hold, eventually emerging in a well-lit warehouse filled with workers and abandoned vehicles, including one that belongs to his wife, Teresa. Inside Teresa's car, he discovers personal items belonging to her and Ben, adding to his desperation and confusion about his family's whereabouts and safety. The plot takes a dramatic turn as Ethan's situation grows increasingly mysterious. As Ethan explores the warehouse, Sheriff Arnold suddenly appears, attacking him with a sedative. Ethan loses consciousness and later wakes up in a hospital bed. The nurse there informs him that his wife Teresa and son Ben have been brought to Wayward Pines and are now living in Beverly's former house. Despite his disbelief, Ethan goes to visit his family, feeling a mix of relief and apprehension about their safety in the town. He cautions Teresa against wandering or communicating with anyone, even over the phone. Aware of the town's oppressive surveillance, Ethan then confronts Arnold and Nurse Pam at the police station, demanding to know why his family was brought to Wayward Pines. Arnold insists it's for their happiness, but Ethan, unconvinced and furious, presses for more answers. Their heated exchange is interrupted by a mysterious phone call, hinting that Arnold is merely a pawn in a larger scheme controlled by an unknown mastermind. Outside the police station, Ethan encounters Dr. Jenkins, who advises him to abandon any thoughts of escape. Ethan, however, firmly states he doesn't belong in Wayward Pines. Seeking more insight, Ethan meets with Kate in the Pine Forest, away from the prying eyes of surveillance cameras. However, Ben follows his father and witnesses the meeting, prompting him to rush home and inform Teresa. Kate explains to Ethan that after spending 12 years in Wayward Pines, she has resigned herself to the town's rules 
as the only means of survival. Upon returning home, Ethan is shocked to find his family missing, with only Teresa's wedding ring left behind. Frantically searching for them, he discovers them near the isolation wall, where Arnold is threatening them with a gun. In a tense confrontation, Ethan struggles with Arnold, and Ben intervenes by hitting Arnold with a car. As Arnold lays dying, he cryptically warns Ethan that the truth is far worse than he can imagine. Ethan, taking the key to the isolation wall, opens the gate only for a strange figure to snatch Arnold's body, accompanied by a creepy noise. Ethan quickly closes the gate and escapes with his family. Back at home, the family is deeply shaken. Ethan advises them to pretend to lead a normal life while they plan their escape. The next day, a mailman delivers a letter to Ben, welcoming him to Wayward Pine Academy, along with a uniform. Ethan, in need of a gun, visits the police station only to encounter the mayor, Brad, who warns him to follow the town's rules and avoid asking questions. Ethan is also congratulated on becoming the new sheriff, complete with a cake and a newspaper announcing Arnold's retirement. Reluctantly, Ethan plays along. Meanwhile, Ben attends Wayward Pine Academy, where he meets his teacher Megan, who is also the mayor's wife and a therapist specializing in molding the children's minds. Ethan, continuing his investigation, discovers hidden files on the town's residents, nudging him to delve deeper into the secrets of Wayward Pines. Soon after, the tension within the town continues to escalate. The residents capture a man named McCall, who is accused of spreading harmful ideas on walls. Nurse Pam pushes for a public execution the following night, but Ethan, now acting as the sheriff, strongly opposes it. In his office, Ethan interrogates McCall, but is interrupted by a phone call, leading him to reluctantly agree to execute McCall the next night. That evening, Ethan's son Ben sneaks out with his school friend Amy, indicating the younger generation's growing curiosity and defiance. Meanwhile, Ethan and Teresa have dinner at a local restaurant with the mayor and his wife Megan, where other town residents, including Pam, Kate, and her husband, are also dining. A celebration for the new sheriff follows, during which Pam takes the opportunity to congratulate Ethan, but also stresses the importance of upholding the town's strict rules. Ethan, feeling the weight of his new role, publicly declares his commitment to rooting out true evil in Wayward Pines. After the dinner, Ethan asks Teresa to return home, while he attempts to secretly help McCall escape from the cell. However, McCall suggests they head towards the isolation wall instead. At a cliff near the wall, McCall reflects on its purpose, whether it's meant to keep the residents in or something from the outside out. In a moment of desperation, McCall embraces Ethan and then runs into the electrified wall, sacrificing himself in a bid for freedom. Teresa, meanwhile, receives a letter stating she can now work at the Wayward Pines Realty Associates, McCall's previous workplace. Ethan, determined to leave Wayward Pines, packs weapons and successfully climbs the cliff. However, he soon realizes he's being watched by a strange figure. As night falls, a dark shadow attacks him injuring his arm. Despite firing his gun, Ethan is unable to fend off the swift creature. The next morning, Ethan prepares to navigate the pine forest, hoping to find help from the nearest city. In the town, Ben finds his new school unsettlingly perfect. While Teresa starts her new job at the realty office, she's assigned to assist a new resident, Wayne, who appears confused and disoriented. Sensing a shared experience, Teresa offers her help and discreetly inquires about his past. However, their conversation is interrupted by Pam. Later, Teresa takes Wayne to a house under the guise of giving a tour. Using the noise of a dryer as cover, she warns him about the surveillance in Wayward Pines. She learns from Wayne that he remembers waking up in a chamber, surrounded surrounded by others in a similar situation. Meanwhile, Ben and two new students are called to a closed, all-white room for orientation. Megan, the teacher, and Mayor's wife begins the session, hinting that they are about to learn the hidden truths of Wayward Pines. Teacher Megan reveals a disturbing image of a hairless, monstrous humanoid creature evolved from humans in a dominant predator known as Abby, short for an aberrant. She explains that these creatures Abbeys travel in herds. With the lunch break offering the students a brief respite to process this revelation, the session resumes. Each student receives an ancient coin dated 2095, leading Teacher Morgan to reveal a startling fact. The current year is not 2014, as they believed 
But 4028, she explains that their supposed accidents were actually deliberate selections to bring them to Wayward Pines. The residents, including the students, have been in hibernation chambers for over two millennia, chosen by the program's creator, David, who Megan says is always watching over them, though they will never meet him. Ethan, feeling a constant sense of surveillance, ventures into the woods. He cleverly uses an animal carcass to mask his scent and observes the abbeys. His journey through the pine forest leads him to the ruins of human civilization, confirming Teacher Megan's revelations. Unexpectedly, he encounters a helicopter and meets Dr. Jenkins, who reveals himself as David, the architect of Wayward Pines. David urges Ethan to return to town promptly. My friends, the continuation of the story is now on the screen in front of you.